Hello students and welcome to my channel. My name is Mr. Meshok Gigi and welcome to eMath with Gigi. Uh, kindly, I encourage you to subscribe and uh, uh, share and like uh, how these lessons are being helpful to you as we learn together in the field of mathematics. Now, today we're going to be looking at um, something from uh, matrices, that is matrices 2, uh, where we have, where we deal with eigenvalues and eigenvectors and all that. And now today we're going to be looking at a linear system um, and how to find uh, the state transition matrix and also to prove that the state transition matrix where t is, is a zero gives you something called the identity matrix. So the i here just represents the identity matrix. So the question is how do we start solving this? So the solution. So our solution will be given by, now uh, we know qt, that is a our state transition matrix will be given by the Laplace inverse of uh, Si minus A, then um, then inverse, then is given by that, okay? So it is given by S, uh, Laplace inverse of Si, uh, then minus A, then you find the inverse of it. So now we start by getting Si minus A, Si minus A. So our S si is this matrix s 0 0 s okay because we have an s an s is just uh, we can call it as like a scalar by the end of the day it's like a scalar multiplied by the identity matrix and we know the identity matrix is 1 0 0 0 1 so when you multiply by s then it gives you this particular matrix then subtract your matrix a which is 0 1 negative 3 negative uh, negative of 4 so therefore this just gives you what S minus S minus zero gives you S zero minus one gives you negative one zero minus minus three gives you a positive of three and we have S minus minus uh, four which will give you S plus what S plus S plus four. Now since we are dealing with a two by two matrix, um, we need also need to get out the determinant. And the determinant uh, of A of uh, the debt yeah correct so the determinant of this matrix here the determinant for this particular matrix will be given by so the debt of uh, si minus a will be given by you multiply elements in the main diagonal then subtract the elements in the minor diagonal so our elements so i can i can um, cross my s so that we can uh, differentiate between uh, an s and a five okay so you multiply elements in the main diagonal subtract the elements in the main diagonal so that will be s uh, s you shall have s multiplied by s plus 4 so i can uh, slash that in that then minus then 3 times negative 1 gives you negative 3 negative 3 and you have a negative here so this will just become what positive of positive of 3 so expanding this one we shall have s times s we shall have s squared then s times 4 then you have plus 4 s then plus what plus 3 so that is our determinant Therefore, writing Si minus A inverse. So Si minus A, then the inverse will be given by 1 over determinant. We know inverse is always given as 1 over determinant. Now, so we know, we are now getting Si minus A inverse is given by we know the inverse is given by one over determinant and what is our determinant we have this now okay let me just uh, write it uh, first of all s squared plus 4s then plus 3 then what do you do next interchange the values in the main diagonal then uh, change the sign of the minor diagonal so this value will come here so we'll have s plus 4 there then our s comes here then it's s plus 4 then we shall have uh, this one is a negative becomes positive this one is a positive becomes what becomes negative so the inverse for our matrix si minus a will be given by this <coughs> so that will be our inverse by the end of the day now you always check now depending on your determinant you can always know how uh, or which uh, which way you're supposed to go in regards to this matrix here that you're forming by the end of the day, okay? Because you're supposed to multiply, this one is a scalar, you can treat this as a scalar, so it's supposed to multiply each and every element uh, inside the matrix, all right? 
supposed to multiply each and every element before we now find the Laplace inverse for the uh, for the matrix there. Now, this determinant here can help you understand what you're supposed to do next. So when you find that you can factor out this uh, particular particular, um, yeah, it is not an equation; it is an expression. Okay, because we don't have an equal sign. We can split this in terms of factors. So you always check if you can split them. Uh, we'll see why that one is important. So which two numbers can you add to give you uh, to give you four and when you multiply to give you three? Do you have any numbers? Yes, you can have three and one. Okay. When you add three plus one, it gives you four. And when you multiply three times one, it gives you it gives you three. So you can split these in terms of its factors right, together. So we can say now this can also be written by now. Let me rewrite it because you now know what we have there. So it will be s plus one and s plus three right together. These two numbers, when you do uh, factorization, then this one is just what you basically have because we represent these two numbers uh, in terms of uh, the sums and the products. So we have one and what we have one and three. Now this number uh, multiplies. So this fraction here will multiply each and every. A number inside the bracket. So we shall have therefore this one equals to <coughs> so s plus 4 then all over this. So we have s plus 1 then you have uh, uh, you have s plus 3 the same in both places with this. So it is 1 over s plus 1 then s plus 3 then again with this so we have negative 3 over s plus 1 um, s plus 3, then we have s, then we have s plus 1, s plus 3. So each and every element will be multiplied by the determinant, <coughs> which is just, which is treated as a constant by the end of the day. Now, now, when these functions are in this form, you cannot really find the Laplace inverse. Okay, so you have to split these functions, and you'll split them using something called the partial partial fractions. So each and every element here shall be multiplied, shall be expressed in terms of our in simplest form by partial fractions, where you shall split them. Okay, so there's no Laplace transform which is given in this form. So you make each and every term and create uh, and uh, split them in terms. Of, uh, of of um, of functions which will be able to get the Laplace inverses. Now we start with the first one. So each and every element shall uh, shall uh, undergo the same process. So we start with the first uh, with s plus four, four over s plus one, then s plus three. So we know one thing <coughs> when you have when you have uh, when you have two factors multiplied together, this can be Expressed in the term of a over the first factor plus b over s plus three. That is uh, through by partial fractions. Now we have to make this and this term to be the same. So what is the LCM of this and this? See, uh, it is just the multiple of uh, this term here and this term. All right. Then this term shall multiply uh, by a. Then this term shall multiply by a. Remember, this is the same as saying when you're getting the mod, uh, the LCM of um, let me take such terms. <coughs> so what will be the LCM? Our LCM, let me have a number like 2 there. So our LCM here will be 21 because the two factors, the two numbers are not the same. So their LCM is the multiplication of these two. So it is just 21. The same here, the, uh, the LCM of these and these will just be uh, the multiplication of the two of them. Then this one goes here how many times? These times. Okay. So it's just the same as saying. Uh, so 3 will go here 7 times, then 7 times 2, which will give you 14. So this will go here 7 times, then the 7 multiplies with this constant here. The same way, 7 will go here 3 times, then 3 will multiply with this constant. So we're just saying, it's just the same as saying, this term will go into 21 uh, these times, okay? Then this multiplies with this. So it's just the same as saying, cross multiply your, uh, cross multiply your, your denominators in the other fraction, okay? So now expressing this now in another form. So this will be the same as uh, we are saying LCM will be S plus 1, <coughs> S plus, S plus 3. Okay. So this one will go here this time. So you remain with what? S plus 3. Then you multiply it here. So it is A and S plus 3 plus B. This one goes here this time. So you remain with this. 
So B is plus 1. Now, note this side. Uh, S plus 4, then you have S plus 1, and you have S plus, you have S plus 3. So you notice one thing. The values in the denominator here is the same same values in the denominator on this other side. Are we together? So the values in the denominator here is the same as the value. So therefore, if the value in the denominator is the same as this, and we are using an equal sign, in, uh, uh, this one is an equation, then we are saying also the numerator here should be the same as the numerator on this other side. So therefore, S plus 4 will also be given by A, S plus 3, plus B, S plus one together so this term the numerator and the numerator here uh, should be the same by the end of the day so now we have uh, we have that now we have to solve for the value of a and the value of b in this particular uh, equation <coughs> now for us to solve the value of a and b since we are having uh, terms multiplying uh, with each other a multiplied by this b multiplied by this we can choose in one or the other, how to make one of the variables to be what to be zero? Okay, you can choose um, on a method to make one of the variables, either a or b, to be zero, so that you can solve one of them. So, in the first one, how do you make your a to be zero? You will let the value of s to be a certain value. So, if I want to make my a to be zero, this term here, the all of it to be zero, I let my s to be what negative of three. Okay, so you can see we let s. Uh, we let s to be negative of 3, <coughs> s equals to negative of 3, okay, so we let our s to be negative of 3. So therefore, you're saying, then therefore this, every place we shall have an s, we put negative 3. So in our case here, we shall have negative 3 plus 4 equals to, now this term becomes 0. I hope you can see that, because we have negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Uh, 0 times a just gives you 0. Then you have b, then we have s is negative 3 plus 1. Okay, so now we shall have a uh, negative 3 plus 4 gives you 1 equals to negative 3 uh, plus 1. That gives you negative 2. So we'll have negative 2 what? Negative 2 b. So divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. So your b will be what? Negative half. Are we together? So we have our value of b, which will be given by negative a half. <coughs> now allow me to rub this. So now let's come to this other side. Then, so we have, that is the first one. Then the second one is when we now want to make b to be zero. So we let our s, what will be the value of s? We want to make this here to be zero so we let our s to be negative one so when s is negative one again replace it here so we shall have negative one plus four equals two now uh, we shall have our a then you shall have negative one plus what plus three the whole of this term becomes zero because you shall have negative one plus one which will give you will give you zero then we shall have negative one plus four which will give us three equals two negative one plus 3 gives you 2, okay? So we shall have 2a. So your a basically will be 3 over what? 3 over 3 over 2. So therefore, rewriting this, our s plus 4 over s plus 1, s plus 3, in terms of a and b, so that we can have two different fractions, then just replace the value of a and replace the value of b. So the whole of this, therefore, we can say uh, s plus 4 over s plus 1 s plus 3 equals 2 so our a is 3 over 2 over s plus 1 then uh, our b is negative a half so negative a half then over s plus 3 right together so we have uh, we have simplified this fraction here into this okay and that is what uh, we shall do with each and every uh, fraction here we shall go to the second. Now you'll notice one thing. <clears throat> I will not need to uh, to repeat the same same process again and again and again because when you're using partial fractions, the partial fractions determines, okay, is the one which determines what you have on the on the right hand side. So whatever shall be changing in the whole of this matrix here 
will only be the variables on the right hand side or in my case i can say on the left hand side okay so whatever shall be changing at this term so you can see for the first one we'll have s plus 4 which is this term for the next one for us to solve this uh, in terms of a and b whatever will change will be one but on the right hand side this term will remain will be constant all through because the denominator is what determines what you have on this other side right together so this side it will be constant but now whatever shall change is the value so our value on, on this side will change uh, on the left hand side will change but on the right hand side it will not change now take note of this you can now uh, you can note it somewhere okay so that is our first value so i'll rub uh, then we solve for the second and the third and so on and so forth <coughs> So drop there. So we come to the second. The second is one. So I'm saying for the second part, for this part here, uh, so we can say for the second. Okay, I'll not uh, really write it down. Can, okay, let me just have it. S plus one, S plus three. Then this shall just be one equals to A, S plus. 3 plus b s plus 1 so i'm saying the values on this side does not change okay so you don't need to repeat it again and again all right because the value is the same together so now again solving for the value of um, solving for the value of a and uh, the value of b again you let the value of s to be now uh, you can let the value of s to be negative 3 for you to find b and the value of uh, s to be negative one for you to find the value of what for you to find the value of a so therefore uh when you can say when s or we let s to be negative three we shall have one equals to so remember we don't have an s on this uh, side so on this one we shall have what and negative three this one becomes zero okay then becomes zero so we shall have b negative of three plus one so one equals to uh negative to what to b so your b will be negative will be negative <coughs> will be negative a half the same way you now replace your a so when s when s equals to uh, negative one so this term becomes zero so you shall have one equals to a your a is negative one so negative one plus three so we shall have one equals to two a so your a gives you what or your a gives you a half All right together so we have our value of b is negative a half our value of a is our value of a is a half i really want to, to to note that so we shall have that now rewriting this term here so writing this term then we shall have our a value is a half so it is a half okay i want to write this kindly um a half over s plus one then minus a half x plus three. So that is our second term, okay, for this part. So our first one we have this, our second we have this, uh, our first one we have this, our second, let me write it here, actually. We shall have one over s plus one, s plus three. We shall get this one to be a half, uh, s plus one, minus a half, s plus 3 so that is for the second now we check for the third and the fourth so we replace now the second term so for the third one let me write this <coughs> so i hope you can you can you can really understand what we are we are really doing in partial so again we have negative 3 we say the right hand side does not change s plus 3 uh, plus b then s plus s plus 1 again when s equals to negative 3 so we shall have negative 3 equals to this one becomes 0 okay then you remain with this so we'll have b negative 3 plus uh, plus 1 so we have negative 3 equals to uh, negative 2 what negative 2b so divide all through by negative 2 so your b will be given by negative uh, now it should be positive because you're dividing all through by two, negative 2 so it will be 3 over what 3 over 2 this one is basically algebra okay now we come to the other one when s 
s equals to negative 1. Remember we're in this function here, okay, the equation. So we shall have when s is negative 1, this one becomes 0. So you're finding the value of a. So negative 3 equals to a negative 1 plus what? Plus 3, which gives you negative 3 equals to 2 what? It gives you 2 a divided by 2 divided by 2. Then you shall have your a equals to negative 3 over what? Negative 3 all over 2. Okay, so we have that. So negative uh, negative 3 over 2. So we have our a as this and our b as that. So we can uh, write it down. Kindly allow me to write it here uh, because we already solved for the values. <coughs> so I hope we are following together. So we shall have the, for the value negative 3. You can just write it here. But s plus 1, s plus 3. We shall uh, expand it and have it as negative 3 over 2 over s plus 1, then plus b is 3 over 2, then we have what? s plus, s plus 3. Uh, let me get it down a bit. Delete space. So we have negative 3 over 2 over s plus 1, then plus 3 over 2 over s plus s plus 3. So we shall have that. So this is the, the third. So we have the first, we have the second, we have the third. We can now solve for the fourth one, this one. So again, again we have said the right hand side does not change. So it is a over s plus 3 plus b s plus 1. Again, we let again our s to be negative 3. So we'll have, well, we have, you have your s, replace it with negative 3. So we shall have negative 3 equals 2. Then this one becomes 0. So we shall have b. Okay, then we shall have a negative 3 plus 1. And together, yes, we have negative 3 plus 1. So therefore, we shall have negative 3 equals 2. This one, this gives you negative 2b. Okay. Then uh, divide all. Um, Divide all through by uh, by negative 2. So your b, therefore, will be 3 over 2, positive. Because you have a negative and a negative, they'll simply cancel out. Then again, we let our s to be negative of 1. So this term here becomes what? It becomes 0 again. But now we have our s value, so this side will be negative 1 equals 2. Okay? Now, uh, negative 1 replaces this value, so we shall have a negative 1 plus 3, so negative 1 equals 2, uh, 2 what, 2a, and divide by 2 all sides, so your a value will be negative what, negative a half. So therefore this term here will be written as, uh, we will have the, for, the, for, the, for s plus 1, s plus 3 will be given by, uh, so our a value is negative a half over s plus 1, then our b value is plus 3 over 2, s plus, <coughs> s plus 3, sorry. So we can see our functions here or our, our representation have been written in another totally different way, okay? Have been uh, written in another uh, complete different uh, form. So these are, these are knowledge that comes with a um, partial um, partial fractions okay so with the knowledge of uh, partial fractions then that is it but basically this is how you go about it now <clears throat> so we shall rewrite this matrix but now we shall use the what we shall use the other representation so where we had this we replace with this where we had this we replace with that and so on and so forth so now we rewrite our matrix <coughs> So our first one was given by this, so therefore we rewrite it in this form. Now, for, for, for us to make work easier, we can just remove the constant, which is uh, the fraction outside, okay? Then we, uh, we remain with 1 all together. So we can just rewrite it and say, it's only the same as, so we have our matrix here. Um, we have our matrix, it is a big matrix actually. Let me create some more space. So our matrix, therefore, shall be written in the form. 
So I'm saying we have the 3 over 2 as a constant outside. First of all, write them. So we have 3 over 2 here, as a constant. Then here we shall remain 1 over s plus 1. Okay, this part. Then minus, we again have the half outside. Then we have 1 over s plus 3. I'm saying that because we have um, Laplace transform which are represented in the form of 1 over s minus a. And all these functions uh, have an s minus a in, in have been written in that form. So we have the first one. Now we go to the second, which was this. So again, we have a half outside. Then 1 over s plus 1. Then our constant, the other constant here is negative a half. Then 1 over s plus 3. Then we have the next one. Uh, that one was this one. So we have the negative 3. So we are replaced by negative 3 over 2 is a constant. 1 over s plus 1. Then plus 3 over 2. Then 1 over s plus 3. So we have that. Then we come to the last one. Our constant is negative a half there. Then 1 over s plus 1. Then plus 3 over 2. 1 over s plus 3. So we have that. Remember, this one is a matrix. The whole of that is a matrix. So now this one is representing s minus s i minus a inverse. So in terms of which have been um, broken down in terms of partial fractions. Now we get now the Laplace inverse. So the Laplace, therefore, the Laplace inverse of s i minus a, then inverse will be gotten by. So we'll be getting Laplace inverse for these functions. We'll be getting the Laplace inverse for these functions. And we know now from Laplace inverse that the exponent, the Laplace inverse of E A T will be given by 1 over S minus S minus A. Okay. So all these functions here are, if you can see these functions here without the constants, eh, they have been given in this form because we have an S plus 1, S plus 3, S plus 1, S plus 3, all through. But now, remember, our function is supposed to be given as s minus a. But here we have a what? We have a positive. So for us to have to have had this part here as a positive, I'm saying, is when your a was a negative number. Okay? So if you have your a being negative, and you have another negative, therefore, by the end of the day, we're saying this part here, uh, the, the part here, the whole of this part now becomes positive. So therefore, if I was to find the value of a, remember now, we are getting the inverse. So the Laplace inverse for this is uh, for us to come back to the exponent function. So our a value here must be a negative because we have a positive at this position. So we're saying now, the Laplace inverse for s minus a now will be given by, will be given by, so we shall just have 3 over 2. Now this one changes to become a Laplace. Uh, the Laplace inverse for this one here is exponent. Now this, since this one is 1, so that means it is negative 1 t. So the value here is negative 1 altogether. Uh, so it will be negative t. You don't have to write negative 1 t. Then minus a half exponent. Now this one uh, value is 3, so again we say it is negative. So negative 3 t. Then again a half exponent. Uh, negative t uh, minus a half exponent um, negative 3 t. Then we come to the other one, negative 3 over 2 exponent negative t plus 3 over 2 exponent negative 3 t. Then the other one you have negative a half exponent negative t plus 3 over 2 exponent um, 3 t negative. And that, uh, students, gives us Q, T. And that is the state transition what? The state transition matrix. And that gives us Q, T, where Q, T represents the what? The state transition matrix. So now, uh, since we've already found QT, we're, not going, uh, we're going to find um, Q, then where we have the T, we'll replace with what? We'll replace with, we'll replace with 0. 
so therefore for every so we have our q then zero uh, now by the end of the day what we have here is every place we have a t we shall put zero okay now we know one thing that anything to power zero just gives us what gives us one so if i put exponent and i replace with zero here i'll remain with what three over two so i'll have three over two then here i'll have minus what minus a half because again this one will be exponent to power what to power zero now the same here we shall have a half then we shall have minus what minus a half then here we shall have negative uh, 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2. Then here we shall have negative a half plus 3 over 3 over 2. That is when you replace zeros here. When you replace your zeros, I will replace your value of t being 0. Value being 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 here, 0 here, and 0 here. Then you shall remain with these uh, particular uh, matrices. <coughs> Here up here so that you can write the answers. So you have a half minus a half, you have negative a half plus three over what? Three over two. So our solution by the end of the day we shall have uh three over two is the same as one point five. One point five minus a half, which is zero point five, we shall get what? We get one. Then a half minus a half gives us zero. Then negative three over two plus three over two gives us zero. Then we have uh negative a half plus three over two. This is the same as one minus uh,